Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Yes, it is rather, <laughs> it's rather chilly in here, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Suppose you everyone to stay awake. You've got slides as well? Yes, they're yeah. in a slightly separate oh, okay. system. Right. Do you, do you yes. know how to navigate to it? lovely. All right. Okay, perfect timing there too. Um, oh, right, fantastic. So the next person to speak is Gemma Ware, who's going to speak about the conversation. Um, and I'm... I'm a published conversation author, so yes, I'm quite uh, <laughs> quite familiar. So it's a fantastic service. So here we go. Great. Um, okay. Is that okay? Oh no. <laughs> Let's try the other way. Is that okay? Can you hear me? Okay. In the recording. Yeah, okay. Um, thanks very much for having me along today. Uh, my name is Gemma Ware. I'm the society editor at uh, The Conversation. Um, so has anyone else here uh, written for The Conversation? Just so I know if anyone, uh, anybody has. Okay, great. So hopefully by the, by the end of my session, you might be uh, interested to do so or, or think about um, pitching an article um, for us uh, in the future. Um, so just a bit about myself, um, I'm a journalist, um, I've been working with the conversation for three years. Before that I worked for a magazine um, called The Africa Report, so my background is in African, um, African journalism. Um, but at the conversation I uh, cover society, which is probably the world's broadest word. So I do everything from migration to kind of British um, policy on society issues, um, but also uh, foreign society issues, be that... Um, uh, LGBT rights or, or, or law or Brexit, which everybody uh, is interested in at the moment. So um, just, ah, that, that is working. So just uh, for those of you who don't know what the conversation is, we are a website um, uh, which is free to, 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 to access. Um, we essentially, we look like a news website. We look like any, any other news website that you, you might get your, your daily um, news from. But our, our kind of USP is that all of our articles are written by academics with a current university affiliation. So the, um, the foundation for the, for the site is basically that we want the people who know the most about a subject to be writing about that for the general public. Um, um, so this is, this is just uh, uh, what was on the site yesterday morning when I took a, a, a snapshot of it. So you can, you can see that um, this is uh, perhaps not you can see that we've got a piece about Brexit there um, uh, before, but uh, from from a, f a few days ago. But we've also, you know, got new research, um, kind of new new angles on on uh, existing research and and on the on the news agenda. Um, so this is what an article looks like. This is actually an article that I worked on about ten days ago by an academic here at, at Cambridge. Um, so it can be uh, it can be very uh, the articles can be very newsy, or they can actually be quite reflective. But the, the goal is very much that they're aimed at a general audience. So these are not articles that are aimed for your peers. Um, obviously, your peers may read them, so um, you, you want them to be as robust as, as, as they can be. Um, but they're very much aimed at a, a general reader who doesn't know, um, who's curious about the world and about your subject, but isn't actually an expert in it. Um, so just a bit about where we come from and how we, how we work. So we're funded, we're funded um, by the HE sector. Um, so this conversation began in the UK in 2013 um, and we got some startup funding from uh, some of these research bodies but our main um, money comes from uh, universities so we have about um, I think I'm right so around 78 or 79 university members um, Cambridge is one of them um, Ox Oxford as well uh, and we we work very closely with those universities um, as a, and I'll go to explain a bit, a bit more about that, um, to basically to try and create a pipeline of, of interesting um, articles, but also academics who are keen to comment when we would like them to comment. So there's a kind of a uh, two-pronged approach. So we would like you to contact us with ideas, but we also would like to be able to come to you to ask you to help us if we want to cover a particular issue. We're missing bit of I'm sorry, yes, <laughs> that is true. I should have looked at that, but obviously Cambridge is... <laughs> Uh, is is uh, is a member um, really? Um, I couldn't fit all seventy nine on there, and so that's why my colleagues have done that. Um, so yes, we're a team of uh, of journalists. So I actually work at the um, 
on the roof of City University in London. So City, um, kind of one of our, our founding uh, members, so they give us some office space, which is very kind. Um, most of my colleagues are based in London, but we do now have a growing group of, of colleagues who are based around the country. So one of my colleagues actually doesn't live too far away from here, but he couldn't make it today. Um, and we have people in, in Glasgow, in um, Cardiff, uh, in Bristol, in Manchester, in York. I'm sure I'm forgetting some of them, but we're, we're basically trying to as the university sector in the UK does, just try and broaden our, our geographical um, uh, expertise as well so that we know people can, can, can go and meet academics. We, we really like meeting you, understanding what you're interested in um, and what you want to write about as, as well. Um, so one of the, the key um, things about why writing for us, um, and it's very apt obviously at the moment with open access, um, week, uh, why we're a bit different from, say, if you were going to write, f if you wanted to write an opinion or comment piece for, say, uh, the Guardian or, um, or any other online on um, journal or um, article um, newspaper site, is that we're all Creative Commons uh, licensed. So that works a bit like if you know if you put a photo on Flickr, you can choose the Creative Commons license that you <coughs> want it to be uh, to be published under. So that basically means we publish under a Creative Commons um, by ND, so by no derivatives. Um, so basically that means that any other uh, news website or any other website can republish our content. Um, they must attribute it to you as the author. They must attribute it to us as the first publisher. So it says first published on the conversation. Um, and they cannot change the content in any way. So they can't change the, um, the article. Um, and we're very, we're very strict about, uh, about that, but basically it means that we are a shop window for other websites to come take content, um, and I'll go into explain a bit about how that works. Um, so the way we work, we look for short articles. So our article's around 600 to 800 words. That can sound remarkably short, um, but it basically means that if you want to write for us, you have to condense your point down to quite a narrow um, angle which is obviously how it makes it accessible to a, a non-academic um, reader. Um, we're looking for insight, analysis, or comment on, on stories in the news, um, explanation and analysis of new academic research that either yourself or perhaps people in your field have been involved in, um, and discussion of interesting ideas and questions um, and stories. So that can be everything from a comment on a latest policy document that's been produced by um, the Home Office or um, uh, a new creative, creative um, uh, economy document, for example, that's been produced, to uh, a piece about uh, some new research that you've done on a particular um, poet or a particular um, uh, book or, 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 um, or event in history as well. We do quite a lot on anniversaries, um, trying to find new angles um, to, to talk to people about anniversaries of, of key events. Um, and, and the key here is 600 to 800 words. Now I will show you an article in a bit which is actually slightly longer than that. So in, in, in recent months we've started experimenting with slightly longer form articles. For us longer form is around 2000. Um, so that's obviously not quite long, long form um, compared to, to, to other um, out, outlets. Um, but we generally, our general length is around 800 words. So that's what we're, what we're looking for. Um, so there are a kind of, th I'd say, four main ways that the articles come to us or get published. Um, one is a direct commission. So that would be um, uh, somewhat, so me just deciding that I really want to get an article from, from you on this particular issue. So I am the society editor. So I, you know, um, my colleagues and I on the, on the politics and society desk will decide what we want to, to cover in a certain week. And we'll go, OK, we need something on this particular legal angle of Brexit this week. Um, we need to go and find somebody. So we'll, we'll email you directly. Um, uh, the other is an expert request. So um, uh, we work very closely, as I said, with the member universities um, uh, uh, who we're partnered with. And every morning we, uh, we have a news conference like any other news organization. And um, we put together a list of things that we're looking for that day. So it might be a reaction to um, a particular piece of research that's come out overnight. It might be, um, you know, planning, say, last week we were looking for people to write about the Chinese um, Politburo, uh, uh, Chinese um, Communist Party uh, conference this week. Um, so so we, can, we can give you a bit, of, a bit of warning, but basically we put a call out and we say we're looking for experts who are, who are, who are, who are willing and able to write about this issue at fairly short notice. Um, 
then uh, we also have quite close contacts with the press office, so they might pitch articles, to, uh, ideas to us, um, which you know we're really keen to discuss. It might be that they just say, we've got this person who's interested, could you have a chat with them, discuss an angle, and we're very much happy to do that. Um, and then the fourth idea, and we'll go, I'll talk a little bit about that, um, is that you can also pitch your ideas directly to us, um, either by email, um, a, a bit like um, uh, Chris was saying earlier, very much, you know, we, uh, all, our, all, our, all our editorial details are on our website. So if you feel, if you're going to pitch an article to our business or, um, or um, business and economy editor, go and find her name. She's called Annabelle. Um, you could just go and find her email address and pitch directly to her. Um, and uh, the other way is that on our website, um, it's slightly hidden, but it's on the right hand side on the home page. Actually, a button where you, you could, it says pitch your idea, and you can actually fill in a form and directly pitch, um, and that uh, that uh, that form gets sent to the, to the relevant editor as well. Um, we very much encourage that. Um, we think it helps you kind of put your ideas in in a written format, so you obviously had to think about it a bit. Um, and we do we do encourage pitches before an article. We it, we really don't like it if you send us a full 800 word article um, straight off the off the bat. Mainly, the reason for that is that it might be not be exactly the angle that we've we're looking for. It might be that we've already got a piece in editing that we're we're working on. So you would have wasted your time if you've just written something we've already working on and we can't take it from you. Um, and it's just it's better for us if we can kind of agree with you before you start writing what you're actually going to say and how you're going to structure the piece. Um, so the goal is it's a team effort. Um, we. Uh, our, our tagline is um, academic rigor, journalistic flair, however cliched that might be. But um, the, the, the goal is that we, you bring the expertise and the academic um, uh, knowledge, and we as journalists are helping you to present that, that, that information in an accessible way as possible to a general reader. And we've, um, you know, we've got our tricks up our sleeve about how we think that's best done on, on an online, fast-moving um, online space where you know people are you're competing for other people's attention so headlines are, to are absolutely key um, and uh, that means that it can, we can kind of have collaborative and, and um, uh, dis discussions about the best way a headline um, uh, will work for your piece um, but you bring the facts and you bring the argument um, so we, we suggest the good angles and, and emphasize the interesting bits so it might be that you've actually put the best most interesting thing that to me as a general reader you put it in your last paragraph um, and this is a really common thing that happens um, people put the last main point in the last paragraph and we actually re we say well we need to restructure your piece you need to start with that and then you bring the context in it's a bit like you approaching it like a news a news article whereas perhaps when you're writing a journal article you would perhaps um, journal academic journal article you might start more with the context and the the academic analysis and, and your um, and your research review and your literature review, and then you'd bring in your, your results in a news article or a comment piece. You really need to do it the reverse. You need to bring your um, your point right at the top. Otherwise, people are going to click away. But um, we want people to, to read your full article and keep keep attention. But we also want them to click on it as well. Um, but you are in control. So um, our system, and I'll show you a bit about it. Our system is is a, is built. Um, so that you can see all the changes that are made um, and you have final approval of the piece um, before it's published, uh, which is different from if you were to write, uh, if someone, say, from the, um, from the FT or the Guardian or the Independent were to commission you to write a piece, um, they might edit it um, before publication and you wouldn't actually know uh, what the final headline or stand first or, or such like would be, um, and people can, I think, feel a little bit um, uh, uneasy about that. Um, so we, we try and um, avoid that. Um, so here's, uh, here's our online uh, system. It's actually a bespoke system that was developed by our um, colleagues in Australia. Um, so the com sorry, I didn't say this at the beginning, but the conversation started in Australia um, in 2010 or 11, 11 I think. Um, uh, so, they, so this is basically, it works a bit like a, um, a, bit like a Google Doc. So uh, well, if I type something, the academic can also see me look, typing in real time. So this is a piece by Daphne Marchenko, who's a PhD student here at Cambridge, um, who uh, researches kind of um, IQ and the way that people have thought about um, uh, intelligence 
um, and, and genetics um, uh, over, the, over the, the last probably 150 years. Um, so this is, this is the piece um, in editing. Um, so if I, if I were to type something there, she could see it. I can write notes for her in the piece. She can then delete them. She can then add links. As you can see, it's peppered with links. Um, we, we don't use references like one, two, three, four at the end of an article. We put links in, um, into the, we embed them into the text. Um, obviously, that's just, this is the editing system, so it won't look like that um, uh, at the end. Um, but we, we very much ask academics to provide uh, evidence, be that a journal article, um, books, um, <laughs> if it's about a, an ongoing news story to, to you know, you know a reputable news source for, for a piece of information. Um, so we're very much asking you to provide the, the facts and the, and the evidence for, for what you're saying. Um, so it's got a revisioning system where you can actually, it's not track changes as such, but you, you can scroll back, you see that cursor on the far right there, you can actually scroll back and see all the changes and who made the changes at different points. Um, uh, and so everything's saved automatically. You never lose anything. I sometimes get emails from academics saying, oh, no, the whole system, it looks blank. I've lost it. And I said, well, actually, if you scroll back slightly there, you can find it's all there. So nothing's ever lost. Um, uh, and, and one of the things we're, um, we're also keen at this stage uh, is a disclosure. Um, so we ask three key dis disclosure questions. They're basically related to whether you have any funding. So that's, you know, if you've got ESLC funding or AHLC funding, it's a good place to shout about it. Um, if, you, if you've got a, um, uh, if, you, if you work for an NGO, um, as, as this person, oops, you can't quite see that. But if you, if, you're related to, if you work or help with an NGO that's related to the issue of the area that you're working on, we'd ask you just to, to disclose that. If you um, are a member of a political party and you're writing about that political party, we'd also ask you to disclose that. Um, but most of the case, that most of the time, that doesn't um, doesn't come in. It's only if you're really writing about about politics. Um, so yeah, it's very much transparency. This is all aimed at making making the um, uh, the author uh, ship of the piece very transparent. Um, and then once the piece is published on the conversation, um, we have a team who actively promote it. So you know all the usual social media channels: Facebook, Twitter, newsletter. Um, sorry, our newsletter is uh, perhaps a bit different. So that's a, a, a daily newsletter that we run, which I encourage you all to go and sign up for. It's free. Um, if you just go to theconversation.com and the top, you can um, sign up to it. Um, so that basically gives you a summary of all the articles that we've published in the last 24 hours. Um, and it's a really good way of seeing what your uh, peers both from, um, from Cambridge, but also from, from other um, universities, people working in your field, what they're writing about. Um, so we, we, are, we work actively to, to promote the piece. Um, um, and in doing so, we also push the article out to partnerships that we have with um, republishers. Um, so some of, these have, some of these have quite formal partnerships with us. Um, uh, some of them much, much, much less so. Um, they just get used to republishing our content. Um, uh, and they know that they have to um, abide, by our, abide by our rules. Um, one of the things that we do, you asked, someone asked a question earlier about how you know about clicks, how many people PDFs are downloaded. Um, so if a piece of content from our site is republished on, um, say, uh, Quartz, I don't know if anyone knows Quartz, it's an American kind of business-focused newsletter, has a huge, huge readership. So if Quartz republished our, um, our, our, our content, they'd actually have to embed like a tiny little hidden JPEG um, image like behind the, um, the article. And every time that's downloaded, it sends a little message to our server. And so we can actually count how many times it's read on other people's websites. So we can tell you how many times your article was read on Quartz or on Newsweek or on The Guardian. Um, you might see the mail online there and look in horror um, at that. <laughs> now, I, I can, sorry, if uh, people do have that reaction sometimes. Um, for us, the Daily Mail or, or other sites like it, um, which you might uh, not, not want to see your, your, your content on there, for us, that it's, a, it's a real coup that if a piece of academic research is published in its totality in uh, a website like the Daily Mail, it is the world's most read newspaper website. And if they publish um, a piece of content from the conversation, it gets lots and lots of readers. And they're reading your expert analysis of a situation. So. Um, they also have to abide by our rules as well. Um, they, have, they can't change what you, what you say. Um, so it's very much a global um, uh, um, republishing um, 
uh, sphere. So we have El Pace, we have um, lots of Indian republishers who take us, obviously American um, sites too. So you can find that um, your piece gets uh, republished in lots of, lots of places and you get readers and, and commenters from, from all those places. Um, so uh, just briefly, what's, what's in it for, for you or for, for, um, as, as an academic? So reach new audiences among researchers and, and media and a wider public. I'd say that's particularly the case for early career researchers um, who are kind of trying to establish yourself in, in a field. Um, you can create new opportunities for, for impact and partnerships um, and, and projects that you, you might want to be working on. Um, raise your profile. You have control of your profile on, on the conversation. Um, you can um, edit it and um, update it with journal articles that you've published. You can update it with, with um, if you change university, you can, you can update it um, on, on that. So it kind of it's you have access to it. Uh, you own it. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, so um, it's very much uh, tied to your, your department as well. It says it's linked to you at Cambridge. Um, and so hopefully it will also help you improve your communication skills. Um, as well, so we really work with you to, to say, could you, could you change that sentence structure just slightly and it would help you um, to explain your point a bit better. We're not doing it to, to, to just annoy you, we're really doing it because we think that you could perhaps express yourself in a, a way that's slightly more accessible. Um, and it should be fun, hopefully. Um, I think people perhaps might, f the first edit they might be a little bit shocked, but then when they and they go through the process, they realise that it's actually um, been quite a good learning experience for them um, for the first time they do it. Um, uh, and these are just some examples of, of, of impact that's, that's happened as a result of, of conversation articles. So um, republished in The Guardian, cited in OECD reports, um, people being asked to help um, uh, uh, in with civil service um, projects. Um, article cited in the House of Commons, um, in select committees, and in the European Parliament. Um, so this is this is this is because actually the articles are short and they are succinct and they are a really easy way to just get to grips with a quite a which can be quite a complex topic <laughs> or idea, um, and also can lead to other opportunities. So um, that could to ask you to do a TEDx talk, um, uh, do new research products um, projects. Sorry, um, or uh, Invite. I think people are invited to do to do books and to do um, documentary project projects and things like that. So it's just a stepping stone to other things. Your name is attached to this area of expertise, and people can find you um, and know that you're uh, interested and willing to talk about it to a general audience. Um, oh yeah. So this is just an example of, of Daphne's profile. So she has access to this, and she can change it whenever she wants. So. It's very much, you know, about you as the author. Um, your editor's name is nowhere to be seen. Um, it's about you. Um, so uh, it's, it's yeah, very much about raising your, your own profile. Um, and then this is a bit that people quite like. Um, the system is built in a way that gives you access to a dashboard so you can see all of the um, reads that you've, you've had. Um, so you can see uh, how many articles you've done, where in the world they've been read, um, how many readers, how many comments. Um, so we are called the conversation show. We do in invite comment. Um, some of those comments can be startling um, for some people, um, but we ask you. We, we find that when academics engage in their own comments, actually the, the level of comment is much improved. Um, you don't have to engage in comments at all as well. Um, it's very much up to you. Um, you can just put your piece out there and not look at the comments if you don't want to. We know some um, academics who actually consider all comments um, as uh, a form of impact almost. They've, they've had people interested in their work. They've actually had people commenting and, and discussing their ideas. Um, that's an interesting thing to explore in, in the future. Um, uh, and you can see that uh, this is a piece that's translated as well. So it's, it's she can see um, uh, her piece has gone into French. So um, we have a French website as well. Um, so this, you can go and look at this. It can be a little bit competitive to look at yours versus your peers, perhaps, and see how many reads you've got. Um, but it's built, it's built to, to, to show you, you kind of how many people are reading your piece. Um, and this is just uh, to show you how many um, uh, people can see the piece worldwide. So IFL Science, I don't know if anyone knows that. It's mainly a Facebook group. Publishes the kind of popular science. So they take quite a lot of our content. Um, Quartz Scroll, that's Indian, uh, the Independent, Arts Technica. Th these are, uh, uh, yeah, uh, global global um, uh, websites. 
<coughs> just got a couple. Um, just wanted to show you very quickly. Um, sorry, just to say that we we haven't we haven't got any commercial interests, so we um, uh, we don't have any we don't carry any advertising, um, and we don't have any commercial access to grind. So we we don't. Um, we would never not turn away your idea because it didn't fit into a particular point of view or a particular political um, uh, perspective. Um, very, very briefly, um, so lots of authors have written lots of articles for us um, and we're growing and we're really keen to get new, young, um, early career researchers writing for us and we really enjoy working with, with you guys. Um, and these are just some of our stats, so this is the latest round. So. Um, these are how many people visit the site, how many views of the conversation in the month. And this figure here at the bottom is how many um, people have uh, viewed our content um, since, since, uh, since the Conversation UK was founded. So that includes, uh, as I was saying, that includes how we, we can tell uh, when it's been seen on other sites. Um, so we think we're doing okay for what is quite a new um, organisation. We've only been going, yeah, a couple of years. Um, and uh, these are just some, some, some graphs, but generally the curve is, is going up. Um, so 1.5 uh, million monthly visitors. And uh, our content in republication is read s around 7 to 8 million times a month. Um, and we also uh, publish stuff on uh, Facebook. So we have quite a, a big um, uh, push to, uh, to make the, the, uh, our articles kind of work. Um, as Facebook videos, um, uh, that's quite a new developing area for us. I think you, you may, s you know, people look at content um, and Facebook Lives as well. We're experimenting a bit with that. That that will be if your content, if your um, article works in that in that um, environment, we will kind of talk with you about how best to promote it on, on Facebook in a Facebook Live. Um, uh, very briefly, we also run a podcast which I actually uh, produce um, with my with uh, with a colleague. Um, so this is a monthly podcast, it's called The Ant Hill, so please get your phones out and subscribe. Um, it basically, uh, we take a theme each month and we're actually launching one today, it's on the Russian Revolution, um, actually, uh, for the centenary. Um, but we've done things on um, memory, we've done things on belief, we've done a podcast on um, scientists who experiment on themselves and whether that's a good idea or not. Um, so that's uh, that's another project that we work on, um, and also you know if you're not if you're not have you haven't got the time to write a piece, but you're interested in a, a podcast um, or audio segment, um, we'd be keen to talk to you about that too. Um, and just uh, finally, yes, yeah, so the conversation is part of this global network. So uh, started in Australia, the UK was a set second iteration. We now have offices in the US, Africa, France, Canada, Indonesia. Um, I think it's a, it's a glowing idea and the model is, is taking off um, uh, around the world. Um, so we, I have colleagues basically in every time zone, so if something happens, if a breaking news story happens, we usually have covered it um, for the next w when the next editor wakes up uh, in the next time zone. So um, it's a really exciting um, place to be working because it just feels like uh, quite a new, a new model and an, an interesting um, uh, interesting environment. So, um, do follow us on Twitter at the Conversation UK. You can also follow all the other conversations at their various um, uh, hashtags, uh, uh, Twitter handles. Um, and yes, uh, our newsletter is probably the best way uh, to um, to find out what we do. And I would encourage you, if you're going to pitch, um, I would encourage you to just have a look at the kind of things that we've done on your in your field um, and in the area that you're looking to pitch. Um, we do get a lot of pitches where people basically pitch an article that we've already published. So um, it's really it's important that you know what we're doing and what we're likely to, 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 to take. Um, I think I've nearly run out of time. So if anyone has any questions, um, I'd be happy to. And also happy to talk to anyone who's got ideas or would be interested in writing um, uh, afterwards as well. Uh -huh. um, and then the other one is, uh, do you have to write it under your own name, or can you write anonymously to your own um, So, first question on translation. Um, yes, we do. So, at the moment, we only have two non-English language websites. Um, one is in French and one is in Indonesian. The Indonesian one is very new. Um, uh, so, they are doing all the translations. The French one, uh, our colleagues there um, 
work within a translation service. If you can speak the other language, uh, they will ask you to approve the piece as well. Um, if not, then um, that will that get, get translated. It w we won't help with translations for other republishers, um, but they do s often contact us and say, can we translate your piece? Um, your second question on anonymity, I'm afraid not. No, you have to write under your own name. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's, it's quite obvious that this is, you know, sort of in part so that universities can perhaps wrestle or control away from the more classical media in terms of how science is um, presented, right? Or at least it kind of seems as if. So do you kind of, or does the conversation see itself as a future of um, science communication in general? I'm curious, so how do you see the development of the organization? Um, I don't think it's trying to wrestle uh, anything from anyone. I think it's, there's, it, it was founded because um, the, 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 the editor who founded it, a guy called Andrew Jaspin, um, he, he was he, in Australia, in the Australian space, he, he basically thought that there were uh, journalists were having to, um, to write stories about issues that they didn't have the time to research properly. Um, and he thought that the, the academic community just has a lot of untapped information that it wasn't, and, and the, the kind of the, the mesh between journalism and academia wasn't working properly. I don't think the, th this obviously isn't, we're our, it's not our job to replace science journalists in, in the major papers. Um, we would like to try and work with them. Um, you know, we, 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 we would hope that publishing an article on the conversation, say for example, you've got a new piece of research coming out, um, you would see it as part of, part of your media um, plan for getting that, that um, getting press coverage for that um, piece of research. So it might be that you say, OK, I'm going to write a piece for the conversation where I explain how I did the research and why. Um, but I also want to then point other, um, other uh, news outlets to that piece, perhaps, just to explain my point of view. But I'll also do interviews alongside it. So it's not a replacing as such, but it's just a, a, um, a way that ac academics can um, talk in their own words a bit more about their research. You mean as the organisation? Yeah. Well, we wouldn't, we wouldn't ever re reject a, a piece because of a political perspective. Um, we, you know, as any other, um, uh, as the BBC, we're try trying to look for balance. So, you know, Brexit is actually a really interesting case for that because obviously there's m most of academia is uh, against Brexit. So we did work um, try hard to try and find um, academics who had. Um, uh, the, op the opposite po point of view um, as well uh, and that's this it's been an interesting one for us but we wouldn't we would never reject uh, a piece on any political grounds um, uh, so we would be open to taking any 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 piece from any political persuasion really um, if it was based in in rigor rigor rigorous academic research I mean that's that's the thing you, you have to write from your own you have to write on your from your own area of expertise if you're a uh, someone who studies um, 16th century literature, we're not going to ask you to write about the Labour Party in modern day Britain. Um, we'll ask you to write about 16th century literature. So um, it's, 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 it's kind of uh, that perspective. Yeah. I should perhaps have just said, sorry, we take article um, ideas from PhD students upwards. Um, so if you're doing an MA or an MSc, we wouldn't um, accept a pitch. But if you're uh, doing a PhD, we would um, be happy for you to write about your PhD area. Um, Sorry, yes. I was actually just going to ask uh, what academic level you get most articles from. Um, it's an interesting question. I don't know off the top of my head that, um, but I would say that probably kind of associate professors or lecturers, um, uh, I'd say. We do, we do get lots of professors writing as well, but we also get PhD students. So it's, quite, it's an interesting one, and I, I perhaps one we should have a figure for. But yeah, we, sh um, we do get a real spectrum of, of, of people who write for us. Um, and we're, we're really keen, um, you know, professors can offer us um, a different perspective sometimes than a PhD researcher who is very much doing on the ground research or, or, very, much or very, very close to that issue at that moment. A an example we always give for, for the PhD researcher is, I don't remember, a couple of years ago, um, there was a train line that went down towards Cornwall that was basically wiped away by um, a flood. 
And like the week before that, a colleague of mine had been at a university giving a lecture and she'd met a guy who'd been doing a PhD um, on this train line. And he'd said, oh, no one's ever going to want a piece about this, my PhD research. And then the next week this happened and we, we, we emailed him immediately and said, Would, could you write a piece about it? And, you know, this is, you know, you're doing your PhD on this one thing and it suddenly becomes news. And no one knows that you're doing your PhD about this, except perhaps your, your friends and some colleagues in your university. So this is just a way that you can tell the world that you're, you're doing this and you're, it's an interesting um, area and you have expertise to give on it. Yeah. So, but, um, yeah. Thank you. Interesting talk. So, tea. I, Gemma, I'm sure we'll be happy to talk to you uh, over tea if you're interested. Um, we will be coming back um, to a screening of the next talk because it's a remote talk um, and it's slightly shorter than the talks that we've had up till now. So, if we can, if we reconvene at 25 past 11, that would be great. And there's tea uh, served up the back.